Hello, and welcome to Imperfect Game, a show less about reviewing games and more of a video game book club with only one member. My name is Tom, and today I'll be covering Crimson Clover World Ignition. Crimson Clover is a bullet hell shoot 'em up made by indie developer Yosu Bane and released on Steam in 2014. Now, on the last episode, I said I would also be playing games I picked up once but dropped later on for various reasons. Crimson Clover is one such game. I remember getting it on Steam because I had already played a couple Toho games and wanted to widen my experience and understanding of the bullet hell genre. While I love the Toho Project series and still play them from time to time, Crimson Clover just didn't hook me and it was shelved because of that. So for today's episode of Imperfect Game, I give Crimson Clover a second chance and a closer look. The game is your typical space shooter, but what Crimson Clover brings to this tried and true premise is polish and millions of stars. You fly around on a top, in a top-down perspective while shooting, dodging, and collecting stardust. You can lock on with your alternate fire button to attack many enemies at once, while also slowing your ship down for precise control when evading the more tightly spaced bullet patterns. When you shoot down enemies, they drop stardust. These give points and fill the gauge at the top left. This gauge is called the Break Gauge. When you fill it past the red arrow, you're able to activate bombs. Bombs deal damage as expected, but they also clear the screen of enemy bullets. Bombs in Bullet Hell games serve primarily as a panic button when you find yourself trapped from all sides. While it's usually possible to avoid most bullets, sometimes you get caught by surprise and don't have time to react. If you're new to this genre, take my advice and don't hesitate to use these. Seriously, if I had a nickel for every time I died because I hesitated, I would um, buy more games, I guess. Look, you get my point. If you fill the gauge to the top, you can activate break mode. In this mode, you deal increased damage and score points much faster. If you can trigger break mode again, you enter double break mode. You gain even more power, but can't bomb for the remaining duration and the gauge is reset to zero after it's done. As for aesthetics, Crimson Clover looks like an odd mix of 2D and 3D to me. Were the sprites made similar to how Doom's sprites were? Was a 3D model made as a base and was painted over for the final image? The game as a whole gives me this pre-rendered vibe. The backgrounds look great and are quite detailed, which makes it a shame your screen is full of stars and explosions 95% of the time playing. I mean, the game looks good, it just confuses me. But there is one thing I can say for sure, is that the bullets are handled well visually. In bullet hell games, it's important to have a clear understanding of what is a bullet on screen. And Crimson Clover nails this by making all the bullets visually consistent. They also appear above everything else on the screen, so the millions of effects and stars won't ever hide the bullets. The music in this game is well made. It reminds me of the 16-bit era. The tracks are fast-paced and tense, but not distracting. The title and ending themes have this HELL YEAH LET'S GO mood to it. It's a great way to pump players up at the start menu. While technically the music in Crimson Clover is good, I'm just not that into it, sadly. I guess Toho Project's godly soundtrack spoiled me.
I mean, I know it's not fair to compare this game's music to Zunes, but when my only other experience from shooting ups comes from the Toho Project, I can't help it. For the meat of the game, you have four selectable ships to play, each with their own stats and playstyles. The first three are unlocked from the start, but the fourth ship, known as Type Z, requires you to collect a lifetime total of three million stardust. This isn't nearly as hard as it sounds, those stars are fucking everywhere. So even if you suck, you'll eventually unlock Type Z. As for the three default ships, Type 1 is your standard all-arounder, Type 2 has this tail you can move around, and it can be locked into place by holding the lock-on button, allowing it to change the spread of your attacks freely. Type 3 has high speed and attack power, and Type Z is basically cheating and makes Type 1 redundant. There are six stages in total, each with their own boss battle to defeat, and takes about 30 minutes or a half hour to complete the whole game. If you're new to the bullet hell genre, this may sound quite short, but I'll talk more about that later. There are two difficulty modes. Novice mode is bounced around new players or people new to the genre and gives a decent challenge while being more forgiving of mistakes. Arcade mode on the other hand is quite hard and will require some practice if you want to clear it without using continues. Even using the broken Type Z will not help you for very long. In addition, there's also four gameplay modes. Original is the vanilla experience, Boost has adaptive difficulty and makes break mode last forever or until you bomb, but disables double break. Unlimited is basically the hardest mode in the fucking game, and Time Attack gives you unlimited lives as you score as much points as possible within a time limit. However, in novice mode you can only play original and boost, as the other two modes are geared for experienced players. You also have your standard scoreboards, replays, as well as a practice mode. On a more interesting note, this game has co-op, so if you have a friend you can both play at the same time. Now back to the topic of length, you see while this game can technically be finished in less than an hour, difficulty also has a factor. The game lets you use as many continues as you want to reach the end of the game, and they won't stop you from finishing your current run and seeing the majority of the content. But there's a catch. There's usually a bad ending in these types of games to encourage players to improve and try for a one credit clear, meaning to clear the game with no continues. Sometimes these games will even blue ball you by locking away the true final boss. Now a lot of people who criticize the bullet hell genre would argue that locking out content from less skilled players is punishing them and keeps them from having fun, but I believe the opposite is true. If they didn't want skilled players to play, they wouldn't give you continues. They wouldn't encourage you to try again without continues if they wanted those novice players to quit. So this raises another question. Why have these roadblocks in the first place? I think it's because you simply need motivation to put in the effort, otherwise why bother playing in the first place? The difficulty in bullet hell games exists for a reason. While back when these games were in arcade cabinets, the main reason was for eating up your quarters. But when the genre made the leap to PC, that brutal challenge is still there. Why is that? Well you see, the difficulty is so high in this genre not for tradition's sake, but because it's the soul of the whole genre. It's about facing seemingly impossible odds and having the faith in yourself to say, NOTHING IS IMPOSSIBLE! I CAN DO THIS! Look at the top players of these games, look how insane this looks, but I guarantee they died more times than anyone else to reach that point. That's the thing people don't seem to understand, is that this genre is about the journey, not the destination. Winning is just a carrot on the stick to lead you into playing, and the real experience is facing tough foes, getting shot down, and then getting right back up to try again. The effort you put into these games have real meaning to them, and makes the eventual victories that more rewarding. So don't worry if you lose all your lives and have to continue. Don't worry that you're not the best player to ever pick up this game. That's just the part of your journey to self-improvement, and when you finally clear the game without continues on novice though, Man, I could barely beat stage 2 before, and here I am now! Be proud of that moment, because you'll only get better with time and practice. So pick up Crimson Clover World Ignition on Steam for 10 bucks, and get your ass blasted to oblivion, because you'll get right back up and break down those fucking bosses like a hammer. Or at least you will eventually, I don't know. Looks like that's it. This has been Imperfect Game, and thanks for watching.